Hey, 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 Team HQ Sports, and happy Monday, everyone. I bet you all had a great weekend, right? Well, unless your name is Robert Kraft, that is. Had to do it. I'm Lauren Gambino, and this is HQ Sports, the live mobile sports-only trivia game that rewards you with cash for keeping up with your favorite teams, players, and favorite moments. And hey, here at HQ Sports, we like to start every game with a nice little stretch of the brain so that we can start things off on Twitter to get you prepared for the big game ahead. So we always ask a Twitter question. At HQ Sports is where you could find us if you log in. I know we make it really easy for you. Or you could respond right now in the chat with your answer. But here is the question that I had on my mind this weekend. I wanted to take a look back in history and I thought it would be cool to hear your answers on what you think were the biggest sports scandals of all time. Ah, getting scandalous here on HQ Sports. At Spider Cav says Pete Rose. At JGB Forever says the 1972 Men's Basketball Olympic Gold. I know, the United States should have had that one. At Cindy Gale 9 says Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. You guys know the whole ear biting thing, right? That was wild. And at Sammy GD says, A-Rod slapping the ball out of the first baseman's glove. I just had to mention that one for Lauren Gambino. Well, thank you so much for reminding me of that ALCS game. When it's against Boston, anything goes. I think he was safe. There were so many, but for me, two of them stick out the most. The first might be the craziest of all time. The Nancy Kerrigan story, right? Yes, Tanya Harding was named an accomplice and banned from the sport for life. So wild. Oh, and here we go. Sammy Sosa, he swings, he breaks the bat. Wait, what's the matter? Could it be that there's cork in that bat? Ah, how'd it get there? If you're so innocent, huh? The cork, cork just grows inside of a wood bat, does it? Hmm, interesting story. Thank you all so much for your responses. There were so many good ones to reminisce about. So if you want to read more, head back on Twitter at HQ Sports to read some of them after the game. And listen, as much as I love a good walk down memory lane, I could do it all day, we got a game to play right now. Tonight's game is 12 rounds of sports only trivia. If you get them all right, then you win. Tonight we are playing for $1,000. We're also playing for points. And in tonight's game, every question is going to be worth, ready? 10 times more points than usual. I like that. The season finale is Sunday, March 3rd at 9 p.m. Eastern time, so that means you have less than a week to earn more points and level up. Remember, you can earn points by answering questions correctly. Once you earn enough points to level up, that means you get a free pass on the corresponding question. The higher your level, the more free passes you get. That makes winning any game of HQ a little bit easier if you have a bunch of free passes. You can level all the way up to 10 meaning 10 free passes. That's insane. Let's check in and see what our prize is for that grand finale. Oh yeah, season two finale, 115,115. It's a lot of ones and a couple of fives. That's a big prize. That prize is only gonna keep growing with the more points that you keep earning. And don't forget to pick up an extra life. They can come in clutch when you need a big play to help you win. You can also earn them for free by inviting new players to play HQ with your username as the referral code, or by playing five days in a row, you'll earn one for free. Easy as that. All right, team. I think we're all warmed up and ready to compete, right? The game clock is set, and I see that you all have your game faces on. What, you thought this thing was only one way? No, I see you. Timmy, that was rude. I'll let that, I'll let that pass this time, all right? With $1,000 on the line, you better give it your all right now. To the over 128,000 players, ready to take that prize? Let's go, round one starts right now. What team just snapped an A-team game home losing streak? New York Knicks, Harlem Globetrotters, or the Monstars? I'm just going to uh, take one answer away from you. The Harlem Globetrotters always win. Spoiler alert, if you've never seen them, they always win. Hope you didn't pick them. But listen, when you hear seven in a row at the Garden, they're not talking about the Knicks. They're talking about Billy Joel. Thanks, Bill Burr, for that one. If you watch the Oscars, you probably saw this moment. Um, after 18 consecutive home losses, the Knicks won tonight. I repeat, the Knicks won tonight. Man, Samuel couldn't wait to tell Spike Lee, who seemed to 
not really care. He just wants them to tank for the draft pick, I bet. New York Knicks is the answer here. They won one, finally. Oh, yeah. The New York Knicks at the Garden. I know Billy Joel was there for a few nights. My friend saw him live, and it was wonderful. New York Knicks was the answer, though, that we were looking for. 103,332 of you knew that one. And hey, listen, team, I need your eyes on the screen for this one right here. We're doing something different. You gotta focus and pay attention. Here it is. Which of these terms describes this popular high jump technique? The Fosbury flop, spin... I got ahead of myself there. Here we go. Which of these terms describes this popular high jump technique? Fosbury flop, spinderella, or jumping jack flash? An American leaper named Dick Fosbury changed the game when he won gold at the 1968 Olympics, going back first over the bar and flopping onto the padding behind him. It's been the main technique used by high jumpers ever since. The Fosbury flop is the answer here. We see it all the time, right? Yeah, I thought that was the only technique. I didn't know that he was the first one to do it. So amazing that Fosbury flop Heading in backwards, but 89,442 of you are heading in head first to this next one, round number three. Here it is. Round number three is coming at ya. The NBA Hall of Famer, known as the Admiral, played his entire career for what team? Dallas Mavericks, San Antonio Spurs, or the Houston Rockets? Played his entire career for one of these teams. Which one is it gonna be? Although David Robinson's top military rank was lieutenant, he was nicknamed the Admiral because he attended the Naval Academy. He was drafted number one by the Spurs and spent his whole playing career in San Antonio. The San Antonio Spurs is the team that he spent his entire career with. 82,578 of you knew that one. You know what, this question makes me think of Athletic nicknames, our favorite players and their nicknames. I wanna hear your favorites in the chat right now. So sound off. I'm gonna look at all of your answers, that with my amazing production team. And then we're gonna get back to you right before halftime at the end of round number five. But right now I'm throwing out round number four. Here it is. What former quarterback received an exemption to play golf in the AT&T Byron Nelson tournament? Tony Romo, Steve Young, or Peyton Manning? You know, it's just not fair. Some people have too many talents, am I right? Like, be good at one thing and we'll like you more. Just kidding, I like this guy. Not only was he a successful quarterback and now everyone's new favorite announcer, my boy Tony Romo is a world-class golfer too, did you know? He'll play his second official PGA tournament at this year's Byron Nelson. Tony Romo! 73,057 of you knew that one. He was a great fantasy quarterback to have. But I'm slinging round number five, Romo style. Here it is. Who is the youngest? Captain. We're coming back to round number five in just a second. Hang on tight. Round number five will be coming at you. Maybe I just threw that spiral a little too hard like Tony Romo would. I know, I probably hit you right in the numbers at home, didn't I? I was trained to do so. Just kidding, my mom made me take dance instead of playing flag football, which is what I really wanted to do as a kid. She said like, you know, all the concussion stuff, whatever. Anyway, yes, here it is, round number five. Who is the youngest captain to win the Stanley Cup? Sidney Crosby, Wayne Gretzky, or Marc Messier? We're looking for the youngest captain to win the Stanley Cup. Sidney Crosby was 21 years, 10 months, and five days old when he won the Stanley Cup in 2009 over the Detroit Red Wings. He was the one to do it, Sidney Crosby. Oh yeah, there he is, that big win. It must feel so good to hoist that over your head. Ah, oh, amazing. Sidney Crosby is the answer here at round number five. 60,312 of you knew that. But did you know that Sidney Crosby's nickname is actually 
Daryl? Yeah, it's a fun story. You should look that one up. You sound it off in the chat. Our wonderful producer, Laura, is here. Will the Thrill from J Sharp Comedy. I like that. Fixia says the Korean zombie. And Mike Mayer says the round mound of rebound. Oh, yeah. Round number six coming at you. What mixed martial arts legend just announced his retirement? George St. Pierre, Brock Lesnar, or Anderson Silva? Don't get TKO'd halfway through. Well, it was an emotional moment in Montreal, complete with a shout out to idol Wayne Gretzky. For one of the all time greats, the eternally classy George St. Pierre announced his retirement. Yes, he did. George St. Pierre is the answer. 59,209 of you getting that one right. Wow, knocking out over 30,000 here at round number six. We got a second half of this game to play. Give me some nicknames for me. You know, you call me the great Gambino, right? I want to hear some more. Give me some more nicknames for yours truly, and I'll be sounding off at the end of the game with that one. Round number seven. Who won NFL Coach of the Year for three different teams? John Fox, Chuck Knox, or Bill Parcells? What a feat. Three different teams, am I right? This is hard to do. And only one man has pulled off this triple, winning the award with the Rams, Bills, and Seahawks in 73. 80 and 84. His nickname, Ground Chuck. Yeah, I'm full of these nicknames for you tonight. Chuck Knox is the man to do it. 21,420 of you getting that one right. Team, we only got a few more to go here, and they're only getting tougher. Can you hang on in there for the win? It's round number eight. MMA legend Fedor Emelianenko has not won a fight in what promotion? UFC, Bellator, or Pride? Which is it, team? Well, for the UFC's Dana White, Fedor was the one that got away. Fedor began his MMA career in 2000 and became a legend by dominating Pride, Strikefor Strikeforce, and Bellator. And even though he beat several former UFC champs, he never had an official UFC match. Can you believe it? UFC is the answer here at round number eight. 13,150 of you knew that one. You dodged that punch right there as I take you in to round number nine. Who was the first pitcher to win the Rookie of the Year, MVP, and Cy Young Awards? Bob Gibson, Nolan Ryan, or Don Newcomb? And if anyone was wondering, the Yankees won three to nothing today. I know it's just spring training, but can a girl be excited? Justin Verlander is the only current pitcher to grab all three of these awards, but the only other hurler to do it was also the first Cy Young winner ever, Don Newcomb, who just passed away last week. What a legend. Don Newcomb is the answer. 8,442 of you knew that one. Oh boy. Round 10 is on deck. We got three to go. Here it is. Which horse was an undefeated Triple Crown winner? American Pharaoh, Justify, or Secretariat? Undefeated Triple Crown winner. Only two Triple Crown winners did it without ever losing a race. Seattle Slough and the most recent horse to win the Triple, Justify. Just perfect. Justify went 6-0 and over a few months and then happily retired. He put a lot of work in on those legs. Let him live that retirement life. Justify is the answer. 4,974 of you got that one. I won six bucks off of Justify, so he forever has a place in my heart. All right, two more to go to the finish. Can you hang in there? Can you keep pace like Justify? Actually, he's way faster than all of you, but let's see what you got. Round number 11. Who is the only tennis player to win a medal at four separate Olympic games? Venus Williams, Martina Navratilova, or Maria Sharapova? Okay, with five medals across four different Olympics, this record is held by the big sister in the Williams family. We often talk about Serena, but this one 
goes to Venus. Venus Williams is the Williams sister we were looking for here. 4,312 of you knew that one. Wow, this has been a tough game so far, but you have stuck with me. We have one round left. You know what that means? It all comes down to this moment. Everything you worked so hard for, the blood, the sweat, the tears. You just rehabbed from that killer injury, but you bounced back. And now this is your time to shine. Can you make it happen right here and make your good old coach proud? Let's see what you got. Round number 12. What team holds the current record for going the longest without appearing in the playoffs? Seattle Mariners, Sacramento Kings, or the Cleveland Browns? This one matters the most. This team's drought is the longest in major American sports, dating back to 2001. The Browns might lead the sports world in being the butt of all the jokes, but it's the Mariners that have actually gone longer without making the playoffs. Seattle Mariners is your answer here at round number 12, and we have 2,792 new HQ Sports MVPs. Congratulations! <laughs> Thousand seven hundred and ninety two winners. Oh, yeah, it looks like we are all taking home a prize of about 36 cents. And I know what you're gonna say, but it's 36 cents more than you started with 18 minutes and 35 seconds ago. All right, my Duke 007. I see you. That looks like a beautiful body of water in the background. Get some sunshine. You got 36 cents to add to that vacation fund. Jay Robichek, 36 cents is coming to you. You can put that towards a new pair of glasses. Amazing. What an amazing game. You are an HQ Sport MVP, and you could proudly say so. Tell your kids, tell your mom, tell your mailman. You earn these bragging rights. Think you could go two for two this week? Then join me on Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, that's when we play HQ Sports every Monday and Wednesday, so I will see you there. Also, follow us on social media at HQ Sports and me at Lauren underscore Gambino. Just so easily put for you right here in this little box. Bangle Betty from Skull Dry Dryler, Stone Clone by G Jolly, and Soren Lauren by Mossmatic. I like it. Until next time, remember to hydrate, focus, and keep your head in the game. Soren Lauren.